Hey Fly Tires, welcome back. My name is Matt and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now I know a lot of you might be thinking, why am I tying so many Great Smoky Mountain patterns lately? And really the answer is simple. There are 158 flies in Don Kirk's book here and as I study them and learn them, I want to tie almost every one of them. Now I'm still gonna tie Great American Classics. I'm working on the Mike Vala Streamer series. I wanna do a series for Penns Creek up in Pennsylvania. But out of the 158 flies in this book, I probably want to tie 50 or 60 of them. Tonight's pattern is only number 13, so we've got a way to go. Now, speaking of tonight's pattern, it is the Smoky Mountain Near Enough. Not to be confused with Dave Whitlock's Near Enough series, which is most famous for his crawdad or crayfish if you're not from the South. The Smoky Mountain Near Enough, it's basically a mayfly dry fly pattern. Its most distinguishing feature is two strip grizzly hackles for the tail. Now, it's not too hard of a fly to tie. It's a pretty cool looking pattern. I think you're going to like it, so let's give it a shot. So, there it is in the vise, the Smoky Mountain, near enough. The most unique thing about this pattern is the forked tail, the stripped quill tail. But other than that, it's not too challenging. So, I'm going to tie this on a size 14. Common sizes on this, 14 to 18. So I've got a standard length size 14 dry fly hook. I'm going to put down a base of black 70 denier UTC. Now I will take my thread back up to about a third, third of the way behind the eye where I'm going to tie in the, t the wing. Now the wing is just mallard. Wood duck, mallard flank fibers. Now you'll want to grab a fair size chunk of them. What I will do, see those tips are kind of aligned but not perfectly, but I will grab them by the tips and then just cut up right here. Give yourself plenty of length. We're going to trim it to size before we're done. Now just pull that out and hopefully your tips will be still fairly well aligned. Okay, so not perfect, but close enough for government work. And you'll want to tie them in facing forward and about a hook gap in length. So I'm going to measure that is about, not a hook gap, I'm sorry, a hook shank in length. So I'm going to do it about right there. Probably, yes. So I'm going to put a loose wrap right there and then a second wrap and you'll want to prop it up and say okay is that going to be what the height I want I think that is so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of wraps to secure it right here now you can prop them upright or go ahead and cut off this I'm going to go ahead and cut this off lift it up about a 30 30 45 degree angle maybe and then snip with your scissors parallel that should give you a decent taper going back here so let's go ahead and secure these in trying to put our taper down right there now that's about where we're going to tie in the tail but before we do that let's go back up here to the wing and prop it up so i'm just lifting that up and I want to build a dam right in front of it. As many wraps as it takes to, to get it standing upright. Okay. I think that's looking okay. I'm going to take my bodkin and just try to split these evenly right here. Then I'm going to do some figure eights in between these. So. And I'm going to try and stand these back up one more time just with a couple of wraps right in front. So we've got a decent spread. And for the most part, they're sticking upright. I'm going to take my thread back to where we tie in the tail. And we can adjust those wings when we're doing the hackle if you want to. Okay, now for the tail, 
you'll want to take eh, some of your scraggliest grizzly hackle like this. This is a pretty cheap feather. I'll grab the tip and then just pull it down like that. Makes it a little bit easier to just pull these out. See what I'm doing right there? And do that on both sides. Then you'll get a couple of pieces that look just like these. Now they do have a natural bend to them. So if you can get them tied in with the with them bending outwards, it's going to look a little better and it'll make the, one of the later steps a little bit easier. But if not, don't worry about it. We can we can compensate for that. Mainly just try to get your length right to begin with. Okay, see those are, are splayed out right there. I'm going to try to lay it on top just like that with a very long tail. You know, at least probably I'd say one and a half times the length of the hook. So I'm going to put a, a medium wrap right there. And how you'll get them situated is by moving them up front. So you'll just kind of... Now this is really the only tricky part of the fly. And I'll show you a cheating step here in a minute. But you can pull, pull them kind of opposite each other to get them splayed out. So you pull this one one way and pull the other one the other way. Okay. Now, if you got it to a, I would say, passable level right there, what I've been doing, I put one wrap under them. So lift them up and then put one wrap back up under them. It'll help prop them up. Okay, now we can go ahead and secure this in. I'm going to, I'm going to secure, I'm going to leave these, these stems on there to try and minimize making a lumpy body here. And then I will trim them off after I get my thread back up here behind the wing. Okay, I think we can work with this. Let's reach in here and snip these stems off. Let's go ahead and, and wrap the, the body, which is just another quill similar to what we just used. I got a little bit thicker one for this part of it. So I'm gonna catch this one in right here and try to lay flat wraps all the way back. If you need to spin, if you're using UTC, Spin your thread counterclockwise. Maybe you can lay it flatter. So I'm going to wrap this one in all the way back right here to the start of the tail. Let's give this UTC a, a spin. Try and keep it flat. And we'll take our thread back up to where we're going to stop that body, which is just behind the, the wing. Okay, let's snip this one off. Now we'll go ahead and wrap this quill body. So take your time here and just touch and turns all the way up. It's going to have a variegated, segmented look with this grizzly. Okay, when you've got your body wrapped up to right behind the wing, you're leaving a little bit of space because we've got a hackle we're going to tie on behind the wing and in front of it. You can go ahead and snip this excess. Put a couple more securing wraps here. And this wing is still annoying me. It's not sticking as upright as I would like. I suppose I can just try and throw a couple of wraps underneath it and prop it up there or not worry about it. Now here is the cheating point, the tip I was mentioning. 
these tail fibers are a little bit hard to to work with so grab one of them pull it out one way and grab the other one pull it out the other way okay I think that position is fine right there and take a little bit of well you could use super glue or if you have UV resin that will work regular head cement would also work but it just takes a long time to dry so I'm going to take the smallest bit of UV resin on my bodkin and just put a tiny drop right there on where those that tail joins the body that will keep that tail positioned how you like it now as with many Smoky Mountain flies the hackle on this guy is brown and grizzly must have had a lot of brown and grizzly roosters in the Smoky Mountains a hundred years ago but take two of your dry fly hackles Coachman Brown, Dark Brown, and then one Grizzly. And let's catch it in behind the wing. Probably two good wraps right there. Leave a little bit of a bare stem showing to get that first wrap. And then a couple of tighter wraps up front. Now we can reach in here and snip off this excess. Now let's wrap the hackle. Bury that stem just a little bit. I'm going to need the hackle pliers for my brown one because this feather's pretty short. Probably two wraps behind and then maybe two to three in front. So there's two right there. Now you can use wrapping these hackle to help position these wings. I think that's going to be enough right there because we still have this grizzly. So I think that was two in behind and two in the front. Now we'll go ahead and snip this excess off just to get it out of our way. So about the same, I'm going to do two behind it and then try to get two more in front. And before I cut it off, I'm going to just try to pull these back to get my head started and get this hackle sticking out perpendicular to the hook shank. Okay. Got a little bit of clean up, but let's Go ahead and snip off this excess. And do we have room for our whip finish? Why, yes we do. But there we go. Just a little cleanup. If you got any stray fibers, now's the time to take them out. There you go, folks. The Smoky Mountain near enough. Not too difficult to tie pretty cool looking pattern. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.